All right, in this video, I'm going to start talking about solving a differential equation using the Laplace transform. And I'm going to be using a lot of formulas that can be found in tables containing Laplace transforms. I'm obviously not going to justify every single little Laplace transform that I do. I do have videos discussing on how to calculate a Laplace transform. Uh, not necessarily everyone I'm using, but you can certainly see the basic idea on how to calculate these Laplace transforms if you are interested. So if not, you can just uh, have faith that I'm using the correct formulas and check out the procedure. It's going to be a bit long. Uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few steps. I'm going to try to just or show every little step. So there'll be a, a good bit of work to do. So I'll probably break this up into separate videos, but Okay, this is, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to solve uh, the differential equation y double prime minus 2 times y prime plus y equals 3 times e to the t. We have the initial conditions that y of 0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 also equals 1. So the first thing we're going to do is just simply take the Laplace transform of both sides. So we'll take the Laplace transform of both sides, and we can use linearity to break it up on the left side. So um, one other thing, too, just notation-wise, um, here in a second you'll see that I'm going to use the notation. Sometimes we use f of s. I'm going to use capital Y of s to denote the Laplace transform of the function y of t. So you'll see a lot of y's floating around in a moment referring to the Laplace transform. Okie dokie, so I'm going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. So we have the Laplace transform of y double prime minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y prime plus the Laplace transform of just y. And the same thing on the right side, we'll take the Laplace transform. We can factor the 3 out though. So we'll find the Laplace transform of e to the t. Okay, so now, you know, some formulas that I'm going to use here. So some formulas that you can find from tables. Or you can always justify these yourself using the definition. So the Laplace transform of y double prime or f double prime, however you want to write it, that's going to be s squared times y of s minus f times f of 0, so this is where our initial conditions are going to start coming in, minus f prime of 0. If we take the Laplace transform, f prime of t, that's going to be s times y of s minus f of 0. And the Laplace transform for e to the a t, that's going to be 1 over s minus a, where s is greater than a. So, so I'm going to use these three formulas now. So all I'm going to do is just replace, you know, I'm just going to replace L, Laplace transform of y double prime with all this stuff, Laplace transform of y prime with this stuff, uh, Laplace transform of y, I'm just going to write that as capital Y of s, and then I'll use the Laplace transform on our e to the t. Okay, so notice in our example, we, have, we could write this as e to the 1 times t. So in our example, we're going to have that a is simply equal to 1 when we fill it in. All right, so let me try to fit everything in here now. So let's see. Uh, we, we would have s squared times y of s minus s times, well, let's see. We would have f of 0, or equivalently, we could simply write that as our initial condition y of 0. And our initial condition, y of 0, was equal to 1, minus, and then we subtract away uh, y prime of 0, which is also 1. So there's our first part filled in. Then we'll have minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y prime. So now I'm going to use our uh, second formula here. So that's going to be s times y of s, again, minus our initial condition, y of 0, or f of 0, which is just 1 plus the Laplace transform of y, which we're going to write as capital Y of s. That was my initial remark here. And then we'll use the 
Laplace transform of e to the t, and we said in that case we'll get a equals 1. So we'll be left with 1 over s minus 1. Okay, so now I've used the Laplace transform, used those formulas, and now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for y of s, then what we're going to do is use partial fractions to break it up, and then what we're going to do is again use tables and the inverse, Lava inverse Laplace transform to get our solution. So those are kind of the steps that we have to do. So we're going to solve for y of s, then use partial fractions, and that's going to help us break it up so that we can use our tables and the inverse Laplace transform to get our solution. Okay, so um, I guess hopefully this isn't the worst part, but let me just write it all out. So we have s squared times y of s minus s minus 1. If we distribute, we would have minus 2s times y of s negative 2 and negative 1, that's just going to give us positive 2, plus y of s. I'm going to write this as 3 over s minus 1. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so I'm going to solve for y of s, so I'm going to get rid of all the terms. I'm going to leave all the terms involving uh, y of s on the left side. So let's see here. We've got 3 over s minus 1 on the right. Let's see, so we could add s over, so let's add s over, and I'm going to do a couple steps at once. Eventually I'm going to get common denominators, so you could write this as s over 1. Let's see, we've got negative 1 uh, plus 2, so that's going to give us positive 1, so we would have to subtract 1. Okay, so I guess let me put them all over 1. Uh, so that gets rid of everything there. Notice if we factor out on the left side, if we factor y of s out, we would have s squared, we would have minus 2s, and then we would have plus 1 left over on the left side. So gave myself a lot of room there. So on the right side, I'm just going to get common denominators. So everything's going to get multiplied or I guess the second two terms, top and bottom, by s minus 1, s minus 1, and then we would have minus s minus 1, s minus 1. And, okay, so still let me just drop the left side down, not doing anything there just yet. Okay, you can uh, check my arithmetic now. So it looks like we're going to have 3 plus s squared minus s minus another s plus 1. You can check that when you simplify the numerator, um, what I'm getting it looks like is, let me make sure I've got everything correct here, it looks like we're going to have s squared, I guess we would have a negative s and another negative s, which would be negative 2s. Uh, we've got 3, it looks like we would have a plus 1, so plus 4. So we still have y of s, s squared minus 2s plus 1. So what I'm going to do now, simply again, we're just solving for y of s. I'm just going to divide both sides by our s squared minus 2s plus 1. So that's going to give us y of s equals s squared minus 2s plus 4 over, let's see, we've got our s minus 1 there, and then we're going to divide by s squared minus 2s plus 1. Okay, so let me make sure I haven't done anything crazy here yet. I think everything looks good to me. And the thing to notice here now, again, for partial fractions, so now you're just doing a partial fraction decomposition. Notice s squared minus 2s plus 1. That actually factors as s minus 1 times s minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time as y of s equals s squared minus 2s plus 4 over s minus 1 to the third power. Okay, so we have now solved for y of s. That's kind of our first step done there. Now what I'm going to do is use partial fractions to, to break this apart. So we can break this apart. So we've got s squared minus 2s plus 4 over s minus 1 to the third power. So we're going to have s minus 1 to the first power. 
we'll have s minus 1 squared, and then we'll have s minus 1 to the third power. Since each of the term and terms in parentheses are linear, we'll just put a generic constant on top. I'm going to use a, b, and c. And now, okay, so just uh, hopefully you remember partial fractions. I'm just going to multiply. I'm going to multiply both sides by whatever the denominator is on the left. So I'm going to multiply both sides by s minus 1 to the third power. So multiply both sides by s minus 1 to the third power. So when we do that, we'll be left with s squared minus 2s plus 4 on the left side. The s minus 1 to the third will just cancel out. We'll have a times s minus 1 squared when we distribute, plus b times s minus 1. And then I guess we would just have plus c left over. So recall now what we'll do is just equate coefficients because we're trying to solve for a, b, and c. So we've got s squared minus 2s plus 4. Well, this is going to be s squared um, minus 2s plus 1 if we square out our s minus 1 term. So then we have bs minus b. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. And now what I'm going to do is regroup the terms on the right side. So there's only going to be one term involving s squared, and that's our term as squared. Let's see, it looks like we would have a couple terms involving s. So I'm going to factor the s out. It looks like we would have negative 2a plus b, and then our constants left over. Um, our constants left over, it looks like we have 1a. We have negative b, and then we have positive c left over. So again, now we just do our equating coefficients. So the number in front of s squared on the left is 1. The number in front of s squared on the right is a. So that tells us immediately that 1 equals a. Likewise, the, the, the constant that goes with our term s, that's negative 2a plus b. On the left, we have negative 2. And notice if you substitute in a equals 1, that's going to tell us immediately that b equals 0. Okay, just substituting in the fact that a equals 1. And then the constant on the left is 4. The constant on the right is a minus b plus c. Again, we know that b is equal to 0. We know that a is equal to 1. So that tells us that c will have to equal 3. Alrighty, so now we have done our partial fraction decomposition. So that tells us that y of s, which again was s squared minus 2s plus 4 over s minus 1 to the third, well again we've just broken it up using our partial fraction decomposition. We said that a is equal to 1, so we have 1 over s minus 1. We said that b is equal to 0, and we said that c is equal to 3. So we have plus 3. Uh, over s minus 1 to the third power. That's our expression now for y of s. So what I'm going to do in the next video is, again, just look at some tables, use some inverse Laplace transforms to actually come up with our solution.